Okay, so this week I've been uh, working on reorganizing all the JavaScript dependencies on the web app and also work on like replacing the old GWT components with uh, Angular. And uh, so basically this is what the new OpenMS web app looks like. So right now the actual JavaScript dependencies are always going to be on Bower.json. Bower is going to manage all the dependencies. So all the dependencies are going to be listed here. Um, besides that, uh, thanks to Matt Rykowski, he added a gulp task to basically copy over from the Bower components directory to the actual lib directory inside the web app to avoid like having everything inside that. So when you compile through Maven, so Maven is going to install Node.js if it is not installed, then it's going to execute the npm install, then it's going to execute Bower install, and then it's going to execute the task that is going to update the library directory. So, and the cool thing about this gulp task is that if we take a look at the size of that, it's not that big, but eventually it might be actually even bigger. Okay, if it allows me. So, and um, it looks like it is the same thing, but it's actually tr the trim version. It only contains the files you actually are going to use, and of course, this is a lot smaller than including the whole uh, Bower components. So, um, the only library that has to be like forced is this one. And that's because of adding. I mean, in order to <laughs> compile a, a, the Bootstrap CSS for batting, that directory has to exist on the repo. So it cannot be dynamically generated. So unless we move all the JavaScript dependencies to its own project and compile it before batting starts, that's the only way like, to avoid having that. So I already created a, a pull request. I mean, all the JavaScript uh, related pages are working, and I haven't found any issues. And actually, Bamboo went green, so all the small tests are actually working. And basically, the selections for the JavaScript versions I use like the most commonly used. And I mean, the, the hard one was uh, jQuery. So I basically choose the one that uh, Backshift is requiring. So that's basically the selection. It's not the latest one, but I was a little bit afraid of using the later one because the later one is like a major version. So I'm not sure what change on the API. And there are like a lot of Java, uh, jQuery dependencies. So that's basically it on that. And then I started to like uh, work a little bit. It's not fully finished, but I started like replacing the GWT components with uh, Angular components. So these are probably the easiest ones. Are just like uh, finding the node label and to go to the uh, resource graph. So as soon as you start typing, it's going to use the REST API to find the node. And when you click on that is going to just uh, go to the resource page, which this is the Angular version. So you can still collapse. And of course, if you, you can select all or clear all, exactly the, the, like the old one. And of course, you can even search. So you can filter, select, and go to the resource page. Um, and this is still like a work in progress because it's like a little tricky, but the idea for this particular one is like to show a small pop-up and of course select the report from there and then save it. But this one is <coughs> still not working. But one of the coolest one that it is indeed working is this guy over here. That also works with uh, Filtering. Can you add sorting up by IF index? Everybody wants that. 
<laughs> That's, that should not be hard. I mean, it's like, it, I, it, as, I, uh, as I said, it's just a prototype, but I can add like any kind of functionality. We, I can even like with, uh, select the columns because all the information is there. So it, you can show like the physical address or more information if you want. It's just like customizing the table, like adding sorting and that kind of yeah. stuff is really easy in Angular. It's not that hard. Type ahead search that'll close probably 20 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> and if we take a quick, uh, quick look on how that looks like, if we one of the advantage of Angular is like I can just bind an Angular app to a specific place, so Angular is, doesn't have to own the whole page, just a uh, a specific part of it so on this div is where angular is going to start working and load the template that has all the basically the the top panel and and the two tables this this is mostly like a combination of bootstrap and angular ui bootstrap to create like the, the, the top panel and the two tabs and the actual work is done by this guy. As you can see, it's not that big. So it's basically retrieving all the interfaces uh, when it, it is initialized by the node ID, pass through the node page. And the other is just updating the CSS styles because uh, based on the on the same criteria used at GWT, I mean the, the colors you see here or here, it's like blue and using the same criteria on the GWT components. And the final part is just like the filtering, like applying the filtering every time you change. Uh, on the filter tie box is like updating the the tables. Um, yeah, that's uh, basically what I have. So, uh, any questions? Can we the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's funny that Larry Karnowski's work from 2000 is still kind of living on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it just keeps getting better and better and better. Yeah, you but eventually. Having to uh, improve any of the rest endpoints to do any of this, or are we able to work with what was yeah, there? Definitely. Yeah, exactly, which what was there. Yeah, initially I thought that I was required to make some changes, but everything I needed is there, especially for like the choose resource page. It's like every yeah, everything yeah. required is there. So. For, uh, compass, so yeah, exactly. It's a com yeah, it compass. Right there. So it's, it, it, that, that's basically what it does. Is like uh, this controller is getting, of course, that is an array, and then. Uh, Another advantage of using something like Angular is like just for fun, I use underscore to use group by and then filtering, and that's how I made the panels group by uh, resource type, and that's automatically generated. It's like a double loop here in in the Angular template. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. No, for for varying, uh, I just found. Remember what you told me about the JavaScript tags yeah. and the style yeah. tags. I just verified that they are pointing to the correct place, and that's what's basically. Okay, so because the uh, quality UI puts in JS and all of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just verify that all those are actually okay. the same names. And so you remove them from this scene uh, where they are. Put no, no. I mean that they were pointing uh, also to the to the same web app lib. It's like in the, the problem is like in some cases the minimized version was not available, so it just removed it, that mean. That was okay, most of the changes. For the UI we have the scene, we put the, we copy to v 3 over, and we are using that, so we probably need to use the new thing instead of the one. I think it copied from the web app. But it's manually copied there, so it's source 3. Huh. 
Well, we can take a look together. If there, yeah, if there is like a man of process, we can create another call task that is yeah. actually in case we update uh, D3, also copy on other places like that. Thank yeah, you. Can take a look. Questions? No? Okay.